Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. All right. Call Halayim La, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. All praises to Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great motion that rule well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. All right. And I want to do a lesson, you know, going into how, you know, this past camp that we had, this Edomite, she came up and she was saying, you know, I love what you guys are doing. Da 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 da. You guys are doing it peacefully, you know, and she just kept trying to throw out the word peace, 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 right? But peace is really a strategic war tactic for Esau Edom. See, Esau, he comes in the name of peace, right? But his actions show forth war, man, okay? And that's and that, and it ought not to be so, okay? If you're coming in peace, then you're not supposed to show forth actions of war, OK. You know, that's that's nothing but deception. And that's what Esau does. He comes in peace to disarm you, to make you put your guard down. Meanwhile, as soon as you put your guard down, he's getting ready to stab you in the back. OK, so really, there won't be any peace on the earth until E gets taken out of rulership. OK, and until E fully gets destroyed, man, then the earth will truly be in quietness. But until then, there will never be peace because Esau's job is to take away peace. All right. This is Habakkuk chapter one, verse eight. It says their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. OK, it says, and their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Right. So they're fierce, man. This is a fierce nation, like the Lord said in Deuteronomy 28. A fierce a nation with a fierce countenance, man. It says, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And that's what you've seen happen. They've had us in captivity. Okay, and they, they come up for violence, man. All right? Peace is the opposite of violence. Yet all they uh, claim to desire is peace. But their actions show for violence, man. OK, so what is the Lord going to do with a nation like that? All right. He's going to use them for his purpose that he has because Esau set up to destroy. All right. To be the sword. All right. And after that, after there's no need for the sword, he's going to do away with the sword, man. OK, the Lord said he's going to burn up the weapons of war after World War Three. And the main uh, weapon is Esau Edom. OK, now that's literal. All right. That's scripture in Ezekiel where the Lord said he's going to burn the weapons. That's literal scripture. All right. The Lord literally is going to burn all those weapons that they used in World War Three. But Esau, he, he, Esau himself is a weapon. Esau himself is a sword. The scriptures say he is as death. That's Habakkuk, the second chapter. OK, so once there's no need for, you know, the sword in the kingdom and death, like the way how much has it set up in this present world. Guess what? Once Esau serves his time in slavery, the Lord's going to do away with this devil, man. All right, because the nations aren't going to learn war anymore. And Esau is all about war and deception and death, man, and wickedness. And there will be no place for that in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? This is Deuteronomy 28 and 49. It says, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as as the eagle flieth a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand that's right man and that's what happened the lord brought esau edom a nation from far against our forefathers man and put us into captivity all right it says a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor shoot favor to the young that's right and that's what it is esau doesn't have any respect for the elderly or the young man okay anybody can get it you know, when it comes to this devil. All right. He even had little children out there 
in the fields picking cotton. And even to this very day, you still got a lot of old people who work laborsome jobs, man. You know? You got old people working back-breaking jobs, man. And does that matter to Esau? No. Nope. Okay. You know? So that's the type of spirit he comes in. And even when it comes to oppression, all right, he had old people trying to take the jump shot. All right, he had young children trying to take the jump shot. As old as, uh, what, five years old, if I'm not mistaken? So this devil, he, he has no pity, man. Okay, what, what can you do with a person like that? A person like that does not promote peace. A person like that promotes, promotes violence, man. And that's what they're all about. Revelation 6 and 4, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword, and that's exactly what it is. Esau's been given power to take peace from the earth, so they also they always want to say, "Oh, peace, peace, peace," but really their whole thing is to take away peace, man. That's their lot, okay? And so they they say peace, but really war is in their heart, man. As the scriptures say, Psalms twenty-eight and three: "Draw me not away with the wicked, and with the workers of iniquity." which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. And that's exactly what it is with Esau, all right? He'll speak peaceable words to you, but it's all deceit. That's why the scriptures tell us to do what? Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verse 10, it says, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness, right? Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that it has that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. That's right. So never trust thine enemy, man. Okay? So just like how iron eventually rusts, so Esau's wickedness is eventually gonna show. Okay, so it says, though he humble himself and go crouching, right? So though he wants to come in peace. And he comes humbly and acts like, you know, he has a pity party for you. Still don't trust him, man. All right. Verse 12, set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take up thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Okay. It says, who will pity a charmer that is bent with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beast? Okay. So one that go up to a sinner is to follow with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. That's right. So who's gonna have pity upon a person who plays with a serpent, a snake charmer? Right? The people who play the instrument and makes the snake come out the vase. Imagine if that person got bit by the snake. How are you gonna pity that person? How are you gonna feel bad for that person? Because they were messing around with a wild animal. Right? How are you gonna feel bad for a person who gets attacked by a wild beast? All right, and they're and you know they're they're not minding their business. They're just messing around with a wild beast. How are you gonna feel bad for a person who gets attacked by one? Same thing with our people who want to mingle amongst themselves with Esau, Edom, and the heathen, and then they get defiled with them in their sins, and that destruction comes upon them. How do you feel bad for a person like that, man? All right. There's a lot of our people deep down inside know Esau is the devil. A lot of our people don't. A lot of our people think Esau is, the, you know, the Messiah. A lot of our people look at Esau like he's a god or something, like they're somebody special. But you do have a lot of our people who deep down inside know that Esau ain't right. Yet they still, you know, coddle to them, man. All right. Verse 16. So that's why it says, verse 15, for a while he will abide with thee. So Esau, he's very patient. He's very crafty. He'll wait. He'll act like he's your friend for, you know, as long as it's necessary, as long as need be. But it says what? But if thou begin to fall, so as soon as that opportunity comes, he will not tarry. Meaning he's going to take, he's going to take advantage, man. It says the enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity... He will not be satisfied with blood. That's right. So Esau, he speaks peaceably with his lips, but in his heart, he's imagining mischief. He's imagining how to overtake you, man. Okay. 
Psalm 62 and 4 says they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. That's referring to the nation of Israel. They're, they're constantly look, looking for ways to cast us down. It says they delight in lies. Right. And what's a part of their lies? Oh, peace, brother, love, peace. You know, but really, that's all deceit because they don't care about us, man. They don't care about our peace. All right. They only want to say peace when they can, you know, when it's to their advantage. All right. It says they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Right. So outwardly, they're blessing you with their mouth. Right. Oh, have a good day, sir. You know. Right. But inwardly, they're hoping you have a bad day. So don't ever trust Esau when he talks to you nicely. All right. You much rather have a devil be rude and be the devil openly than one who's coming at you deceitfully, man. All right. Proverbs 26 and 25 says when he speaketh fair, believe him not for there are seven abominations in his heart. That's right. So when Esau speaking fair, don't believe it. You know, let me see if I can get this scripture real quick. Proverbs 26 and 23, it says, Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. You see? So a pot shirt is like, you know, let's say you had a ceramic pot and a piece broke off, a sharp piece broke off. Now imagine taking that sharp piece and co covering it with silver. Now that sharp pot shirt looks nice because it's covered in silver, but under that silver, what is it? It's a sharp pot shirt that can cut you, man. Same thing with Esau Edom, all right? You know, he'll he'll talk to you like with that silver, but really his intentions is to cut you with the pot shirt, man. All right, verse 24, he that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him, right? He, he tries to dissemble you, all right? Tries to disarm you, make you trust in him, okay? But really he has deceit in his heart. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart whose hatred is covered by deceit. And that's what it is. Esau's hatred towards us is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. That's right. Okay? That's right, man. And we got to be mindful of a devil like that, man. And that's, all, and that's every Edomite. They all use that tactic, man. All right? There's just different levels to it. Some are better than better at it than others. Some can hide their wickedness better than others, man. But they're all the devil, man. Okay? And it's true. All right? There's not one good Edomite out there. They're known as the wicked. All right? So verse 27, Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein, and he that rolls a stone, it will return upon him. That's right, man. So if you, you know, you set somebody up, Guess what? You're going to be taken by the way you try to set someone up. If you set someone up uh, unrighteously. Okay? You know, you roll a stone, it's going to be rolled back on you. And that's what's going to happen to Esau Edom. He tries to set people up unrighteously, and that's why he's going to be set up. All right? It says, a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. That's right. So don't listen to these devils when they start to flatter and try to say, peace, peace. But really, they don't have peace in their heart, man. Because your words got to back up your actions. All right. Psalm 55 and 20 says, He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, man. That's right. Okay. So... Esau's words is smoother than butter, but really he he's hoping for war. All right, there's a scripture where it says, "I am for peace." Psalms 120 and six, my soul hath long dwelt with him that hateth peace. Right, Esau hates peace, man. Okay, so how so how can these devils constantly be cr crying out for peace, peace when they still exist? All right, this devil hates peace, man. Revelation six chapter. All right. He has power to what? To take peace from the earth. Verse 7, I, Psalms 120 and 7. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war, man. Right. And that's not right. If somebody is coming at you peaceably and you reward them evil for their good, all right, that's that's going to be judgment upon you, man. And that's what Esau does. You'll come at Esau peaceably, all right, and he'll reward your good for evil, man. 
So a person like that is going to get judged, man. Let me get another scripture. This is uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and 30. It says, And spake peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. For when they had given them credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. And that's what happened with Esau back then in the past during the time of the Maccabees. They spake peaceable words to the Israelites. Once the Israelites gave them credence, gave them allowance, what did they do? They smote them, man. Fell suddenly upon the city. They didn't tarry, man. If thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. Okay? First Maccabees 7 and uh, verse 10. So they departed and came with a great power in the land of Judea, right? So the heathen tried to come against the Israelites. Where they sent messengers to Judas and his brethren with peaceable words, deceitfully, but they gave no heed to their words, for they saw that they were come with a great power. That's right. So that's what we got to do. We we cannot take heed to Esau's words when he comes peaceably. All right. Because they, they, those devils ain't right, man. You know. Never trust thine enemy. First Maccabees, just another story. First Maccabees 12 and 42, it says, Now when Trifon saw Jonathan came with so great a force, he durst not stretch his hand against him. But received him honorably and commended him unto all his friends and gave him gifts and commended his men of war to be as obedient unto him as to himself. Unto Jonathan also he said, Why hast thou brought all this people so to so great trouble, seeing there is no war betwixt us? Right. So Trifon's being a devil. He's like, Jonathan, you know, why are you bringing all these soldiers? There's no war between us. Talking to him peaceably. Verse 45. Therefore, send them now home again. And choose a few men to wait on thee, and come thou with me to Ptolemais, for I will give it thee, and the rest of the strongholds and forces, and all that have any charge. As for me, I will return and depart, for this is the cause of my coming. So Jonathan, believing him, did as he bade him, and sent away his host who went into the land of Judea. And with himself he retained but three thousand men, of whom he sent two thousand into Galilee, and one thousand went with him. Now, as soon as Jonathan entered into Ptolemais, Ptolemais, they of Ptolemais shut the gates and took him and all that came with him and slew them. And they, it says, and all and all that and all them that came with him, they slew him with the sword. All right. So they did that deceitfully, man. They slew Jonathan deceitfully, man. All right. So we can't trust these devils. They'll talk to you peaceably. You know, peace, peace, peace. And they'll make you, and, and, and it'll come off like it's believable. Okay? You gotta understand, Esau, he's the master, beside, uh, in the flesh at least. Alright? Esau is the master at deception. Okay? So he'll make you believe that he really is your friend. He'll talk to you nice, and you'll be like, damn, this guy's a nice guy. Meanwhile, he's like, waiting to just destroy you. So we cannot give any heed to their words. Jeremiah 6 and 14, it says, They have, he, uh, have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace, man. That's right. There's no peace. Jeremiah 8 and 11, for they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. There is no peace, man. Yeah, these devils are steady claiming peace. But their actions show forth war. And there won't be any peace to you devils, man. All right? Trouble and unquietness and destruction is coming to you devils. Isaiah 48 and 22. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Isaiah 57 and 21. There is no peace, saith my power, to the wicked. That's right, man. That's right. Ain't no peace to you devils, man. So there won't be any peace... All right, till you get taken out the way. All right, that's when true peace is going to come. But until then, it's always going to be war going on.
The Lord said he'll have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Amalek is the chief tribe of you Edomites, man. So if he's having war with Amalek, he's having war with all the nation of Esau, Edom. All right. So hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Dash. All right. And why, why is the Lord having war with Amalek? All right, because you guys are the devil and you didn't meet Israel peaceably in the wilderness. All right, but this 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 uh amnity between Jacob and Esau really goes back to the time of the serpent. All right, the Lord told the woman, he told Eve that her seed and the serpent seed will have amnity. Going to the time of Cain and Abel, and even to the time of Jacob and Esau till present day. Scriptures say how Esau has had a perpetual hatred, man. These devils have a perpetual hatred for us. And see, these other Edomites, they follow Amalek's vibration. So, you know, as the ruler is, so are his officers. So the Lord is going to destroy all the family of Esau, Edom, once and for all in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. But Esau is going to be used to bring destruction and judgment upon the wicked on of our people on this side. And then once they fulfill their lot, you know, they're going to be destroyed. All right. Barbara Mar Marks Hubbard, she said it herself that, look, we are the riders of the pale horse. The Lord, so she, she didn't say the Lord, but she said, you know, God selects and we destroy. So these devils, they know their lot, man. Their lot is to be the sword. They are the sword. Psalm 17 and 13. They are the most high sword, man. All right. And, they're, and they, even though they're really the red horse, they are a part of the pale horse, man. Okay, because they're they're part of the reason why there's going to be a lot of death and destruction in this world, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble with martial law, you know, even leading up to the time of the nuclear missiles. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Ha'ak, Wadaj, the honors to the apostles and elders, the great most, and the world, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all.